Hello and welcome. I'm Victoria. I'm Serena, and together we're from Noir. This show is all about women, specifically in film. We are going to review and analyze movies that are written by, directed by, or starring women. And we can't wait for you to join us. Tune in and listen wherever you listen to podcasts or join us on YouTube. <laughs> we did it! Yay! Holy <laughs> show, she did it! <laughs> Um, brought to you today by Chloe Zhao and the Oscars. Um, they won, so we are giving you this episode. <laughs> you can thank her personally for that one, actually. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, best picture, best director, um, best actress. Best lady actress. <sighs> amazing. So, amazing. Was... Second woman in history to win an Oscar for best director. Second, uh, first woman of color. In history to win an Oscar, so history was made, and that was kind of amazing. I was glad I got to watch it. Yeah, like, it like really cool. we're alive, and it's gonna be like in our like textbook later. That's kind yeah. of crazy, That's right? Isn't that insane? No, I know. Like, like we're living in such like a pivotal time. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, there's literally gonna be like a chapter in like a textbook that's just about Chloe Zhao. And how crazy was I hope she was. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. If you've been with us and listened to our episodes in the past, then you know how this goes down. I'm going to reiterate uh, our format just in case you're new. So we'll start by giving our first impressions of the film based on the trailer and our first watch of the movie, then break down the film and discuss notable scenes, um, things that worked well for the themes of the movie and things that didn't. Um, afterwards, we'll discuss how and when the film passes the Bechdel test. Um, and then finally, we'll give our scores of the movie. So 10 stars is a perfect film with no improvements. Five stars is a flawed movie, but still watchable. Zero s- or <laughs> one star. We're not going to give any. Hopefully, we don't give any films or stars. One star would just be disgusting. Disgusting creation of humankind. Didn't even finish and then, it. Disappointed I watched it. <laughs> yeah, I DNF it. on the movie. <laughs> Um, and we'll end with similar movies we'd recommend it, uh, if you enjoyed this movie and other films by the director. So the movie today is Nomadland, directed yeah. by Chloe Zhao. The film follows a woman in her 60s, played by Frances McDormand, um, as she embarks on a journey through the western United States after losing everything in the Great Recession. Uh, living as a van-dwelling modern-day nomad. That is the plot, courtesy of Letterboxd. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the movie. Yeah. And then I was telling Serena this earlier. I thought it was a documentary. And I should have known better because it was getting best picture buzz and not best documentary <laughs> buzz. So I should have known. And I only watched it because of the Oscars and because of the buzz it was getting. Mm. Um, I thought it was a documentary. And then the only time, like, what prompted me to be like, oh, this isn't a documentary was when she has those dishes from her father and then the dishes like break like the man wants to help her and it like breaks the dishes and in my head I was like there's just no way that they would have caught that I'm <laughs> like it was just too perfect <laughs> wait were they I was from like, her father what happened were they from her father I remember the scene yeah. but I completely forgot like why the dishes were important I just remembered why they were important um, yeah it was like from her father yeah and then because I, I was like that was too perfect. But, like, the acting was so good. Like, the shots yeah. were so good. It felt like a documentary. It did. It felt so natural. And I, I know, like, in the Oscars, they, like, had, like, a little section this year about, like, um, I think it was for, because it was also nominated for cinematography. Mm-hmm. And so when they introduced all of the, like, cinematographers that were nominated, they gave, like, a little spiel or something about, like, each person. Or, like, each person got to give, like, a little quote or whatever. And they said that the guy that did this one, his, like, thing is being very natural and letting people kind of, like, interact with the space that they're in and letting that come out. And then he's just, like, framing it up and stuff. So I thought that that was really cool because you can totally see it in this movie. And I'm pretty sure that's what makes this movie so watchable because, like, I mean, we're pretty young. And we're film students. So, like, we're kind of used to watching movies that are not necessarily that enticing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, like most people our age are, like, 
really I'm excited about like Francis and watching Nomadland <laughs> about like sixty-year-old yeah. women that are homeless, basically. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, my dad was like, "Oh, I haven't seen it. Should I watch it?" And I was like, "Yeah, you should watch it because it's like important to history now." Are you gonna like it? You might not. <laughs> it's kind of boring. It's a little boring. If you're not used to that kind of pace, because it's a very slow moving, very cinematic, very beautiful, like kind of film that just kind of moves wherever it wherever it goes, kind of a thing. <laughs> it's not like a very plot driven, like action packed thing. It's just kind of like you're just following this lady as she like uncovers herself and just goes through life so it very much feels like that as well yeah I think that's kind of interesting because yeah it doesn't really have like the typical plot like she is the protagonist yeah. undoubtedly but there's no like what is it called uh what is it called the inciting incident or whatever yeah, that like no, drives like, her to a conclusion it, she's yeah. just living yeah it's very that's probably why it feels so documentary like too because a lot of times with like documentaries if it's not one that has like a specific I guess, like, point they're trying to make. The documentary is that just kind of like, oh, this is a cool person. I wonder what happens. We just followed around them, followed them around for five years. Like, that's what this movie feels like. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. fan life, let's go. <laughs> You're just following this person around. And it's kind of interesting that they're able to, like, write a character like that. Like, that must have been so difficult. Like, could you imagine? I mean, I've tried to write, like, characters where, like, okay, they're going to have dialogue and it's going to be, like, a plot. But to write a character that has, like, like, obviously, she has a purpose and, like, a thing that she's trying to, like, find out. But to have, like, not exactly any physical, I guess, like, obstacles to have to, like, come up against other than just, like, money, life. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, small like, things. And it all happens in the beginning. Like, nothing else really changes. Like, she doesn't lose anything, like, after the fact. Like, she just kind of meets new people. And things kind of just, like happen around her and she just happens to be a part of it kind of thing so i don't know that, that probably was like really hard to pull off i wonder how many times they had to rewrite that screen i actually <laughs> really like that you mentioned that because i think that's maybe why i actually like this movie i watched it and it made me feel really good like it was a i don't know i don't know if i want to say it's a happy movie because many sad things happen in it mm -hmm. um but i think like she even though the whole film is like uh it, I mean, it's because she lost her house through the recession and she, you know, encountered poverty. Um, she encounters like many positive experiences and people yeah. and uh, is constantly cultivating like a happy life for herself. And it was just so was nice so to see. Fun. It was like a refreshing movie. Like I was just like, this is a movie that cares about showing like happy moments and people yeah. chasing happiness and finding peace and like that's mm -hmm. all she's like going after which yeah, made me feel like really good like, I like peace. that yeah yeah totally it's, it's very nice it was really nice yeah because I would so, I don't know I would recommend yeah. it but yeah if you're looking for like something where she like gets a new car at the end or she like a physical like you said like success or resolution it's not gonna happen it was like yeah it's like cathartic almost <laughs> it was it totally yeah. was yeah it exists especially for like a different reason. in like covid because it came out during like covid and then like the end kind of well i guess we're like on the tail end hopefully at least in the u.s we are right now <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um and so like i guess like a lot of people are feeling kind of like the same like a lot of people are losing things but then at the same time they're finding a lot of like joy in things that they didn't realize that they had before and so i feel like the the film kind of parallels a lot of like themes and ideas and thoughts and feelings that a lot of like america's going through right now because the film is takes place after the recession there's a lot of homelessness there's a lot of like sad things happening and like you know the whole thing of like um there's yeah. definitely like the reoccurring theme in the movie of like the government not necessarily taking care of its people that well and the people still having to like figure out what they're just gonna do after they've like trusted the government for so long um and yeah so it's it's kind of like history repeating itself and so those stories, like, any age that they're in, we're always going to 
you know, kind of gravitate towards, especially in the times when, like, we need them <laughs> collectively. Yeah. Just, like, stories of, okay, things may not be great, but at least we have small things or there's some type of inner peace that we can have even within it. And, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, maybe that's why it resonated. Because, yeah, I definitely feel like if this movie came out, like, a couple years earlier, it'd be like, oh, some weird, like, mm-hmm. whatever a uh, niche type movie that like doesn't matter but I feel like it's so important now yeah I yeah. just thought it was really good like the you know the sentiment of it I like the thought of it and you know what they did there was was really cool mm-hmm. it's so funny it too like, because like the same sentiment that this film has of like finding peace with like where you're at is the same sentiment that made Palm Springs as big as it was. <laughs> because oh, they were like, we're not, right. ex- we're so not right. expecting this at all. And they're like, I don't know why. And they're like, it's probably just because a lot of people are just kind of, you know, they're in a not desirable spot in life. And they have to find their kind of like inner peace. They have to figure out exactly like, are they going to stay? Are they going to go? Like mentally, not physically. <laughs> and so... It's really interesting that we're getting a lot of those stories right now. Um, I mean, I'm here for them. I'll keep watching them. I think they're great. Okay, so I have a bunch of, like, little factoid tidbit things I want to share about this movie. Um, Bringing back the trivia corner. Mm -mm 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 -mm. (laughs) So, because we've already, like, brushed over a couple of these, and I was just like, oh, I really want to share these. So now, um, going to. So the movie is based on a book of the same name by Jessica Bruder and Frances McDormand read the book and loved it. And she actually reached out to Chloe to make the movie. And then she had seen Chloe's movie, like the writer at like, what was it? Toronto International Film Festival. And she thought it was amazing. And she was like, oh, maybe she would want to do this. And so then they started working on it. So then that's how that happened. That's Um, awesome. Isn't that so cool? That's like, literally so cool. Girl best friends. <laughs> yeah. um, and they used all non-actors for the people who lived in the vans. So Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. So those are all like real people that like actually they, do that. Which is really cool. There was they a scene. They did where, so well on camera. <laughs> dude, it was like I like literally that's why I thought it was like a documentary, because I was like Everything is just so authentic and, like, feels so real. And, like, it totally was real. Wait, so, um, like, that one scene where she's, like, working at the camp and they're, like, cleaning up, like, the trash and stuff, was that lady, like, an actor or was she, like, a van, like, person that they found? Maybe. I don't know. I'm so curious now. Do you remember the name? <laughs> I love that scene. They had such great chemistry. And they were just, like, they were so cute. They were just, like, messing around. And it just looks so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The like the grandma girl? Yeah. Yeah. It says Linda May, yeah. So Linda May precious. is an RV living nomad and actress in Nomad Land. Um how cute I love that. I absolutely yeah. adore that. <laughs> yeah. So happy. Aw. Dude, did you know the whole screenplay is on um deadline? The whole Looking thing. At it. Yeah, oh 87 pages. I'll send it to you. <laughs> yes, please. I probably will never read it, but I just, the idea of the access. Right? I Same. I am meaning to read more screenplays. Like, Me too. I need to study. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so they were all non-actors. Um, or at least, like, like pretty much all of them. There's a scene where, um, do you remember that scene where that woman is giving the talk like with the buckets and she's giving them oh, instruction. Yeah. she's like oh yeah that woman they met her and she was kind of like one of the big what's it called like connections to other like, <laughs> campers and stuff like that Wait, so like people, they were able to find like a bunch of people yeah um okay and then you mentioned earlier like the cinematographer so for mm-hmm. this movie they did no storyboards she was just like okay so we need like this type of shot and just like let him go his name was joshua richards yes wow. Yeah, and so she's like, "That's oh, so like so documentary, good. like, oh my goodness, it really Dude, feels yeah. just like like the run and gun like gorilla type movie." 
And it almost kind of is. I don't know how big it was, but their crew was very small, like insanely small, probably just in like the tens of people. Um, and, but they were able to like do a lot more because there was like less people to manage. Yeah. They were able to do like <laughs> a lot of like choreographed things. Cause yeah. Was, like, Interesting. I do like working with small groups, not because it's like, I guess like it just, it's more cohesive. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Because Less, you don't have to worry about going through other people. It's it's a little more difficult when there's like certain people that are only allowed to talk to certain people. It's like a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that it's more so like a family. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, and Did they the have last a budget? Thing, like, what? Did they have what? a budget? Well, I mean, probably. I wonder what the um, budget was. Just because I'm so interested. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Budget five million. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> then box office is six and a half million. Dang! Wow, yeah. they barely broke even. I know. Oh I my know. goodness, that's insane! Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to show you how five million dollar movie won three Oscars. That's amazing. And it only made six point five million. Yeah. Well, I guess covid but yeah wow yeah. oh my goodness it probably would have made more i feel like That's, it's probably going to make more now that it's one because yeah. like i feel like theaters that are open are gonna like try and get the rights to show it like in theirs in the theaters so they'll make it way more well I, that well, always I happens after the oscar season they'll like show movies up until oscars and then afterwards movie theaters will get like the big ones that were talked about and they'll play them at least for another month or so Mm -hmm. i guess this movie (laughs) yeah so it was like distributed through searchlight which is like a disney company so i bet they made some bank so it's not box office bank but i bet there was some bank going on behind the scenes for disney to get that movie yeah Um, (laughs) so interesting Mm -hmm. i feel like we haven't really talked that much about like like uh, i guess the industry like business side (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Seriously. Interesting. No, honestly, it is funny. And we could talk about it more because my friend Jen brought up, like, she was listening to a podcast and, like, in it, they were talking about how, like, they don't, like, voters for the Academy don't really, like, give a fuck about the movies. They just vote for whoever, like, whatever cast they want to hang out with during award season. Yeah. And I think, like, we've mentioned that not on the podcast, but we've, like, talked about that (laughs) No, how it's like they don't watch the movies no because like yeah. on um i forget what it was was it hollywood reporter they do that thing where they like anon uh, they talk to people that vote for the oscars like anonymously about like yeah. their voting choices and stuff and so yeah. they post their like conversations of like wh- who they voted for and why they voted for people and i remember i read one of them the guy basically was like yeah like obviously Chadwick Boseman's gonna win best actor because like he deserves it it was amazing like blah blah blah. and he's like but I voted for this other guy because he's just like one of my personal faves and I was like (laughs) and then he didn't win so because he didn't win I'm like okay all in all because they probably all did the same thing (laughs) that this is I'm missing out so much Dude, that video of Greta Gerwig where she said that people came up to her when she didn't get nominated and they were like, oh, we voted for you. And she was like, well, you, that's a lie because if you all voted for me, I would have been nominated. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, maybe some of you voted for me, but there's uh, no way all of you voted for me. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so gosh, bad. that's ridiculous. Oh, that's I crazy. Because like, we so talked about insane. some movies that were like, they should have been nominated. Like, um, the, the mom in Pieces of a Woman, they were like, yeah, she definitely should have been nominated for Best Actress as well. And then I think, like, I said personally, like, One Night in Miami, I felt, should have also been nominated for, like, Best Picture or Screenplay or something, like, adapted. Like, I can't believe it was only it. nominated for, like, one thing. And it, mm-hmm. did it win any? I forget. Let me look I don't it think up. so. I don't think it won anything. Which is sad, because that movie is... Like honestly, if I were to compare it and Ma Rainey, I would, I would, I would compare them. They would be <laughs> Ma Rainey is just slightly better, just a I little bit. It. I thought I, it was so good. 
Um, I shouldn't have been shocked that Mank won for cinematography. Oh my goodness. I shouldn't be I was shocked, about to tweet. I, am. I was, I was about to tweet right before watching the Oscars. If Mank wins anything, I'm going to be so pissed. And then it won things, and I was like, I am like so angry. <laughs> so bad. <sighs> hate that movie it's so boring and i was like the only reason it's getting nominated for like cinematography is because it's all black and white people are like oh it's nostalgia of like when we had film m- movies and i'm like shut <laughs> up like, <laughs> like i feel like in this oscars you can really see the divide between people that actually want to move forward and people that are just stuck in the past because if mm-hmm. people weren't stuck in the past um anthony hopkins and Mank wouldn't have won what they won Mm -hmm. and I feel like as much as I did not appreciate Promising Young Woman because it didn't necessarily hit the mark and a lot of people feel the same way like I'm glad that people at least tried voting for it because it wasn't the same (laughs) like it's not the same thing they've always seen I think it's on record that we did say that Promising Young Woman would be a good screenplay (laughs) and it won for best screenplay Play. so we were yeah you know, we were we were on it with that but then the rest of it yeah yeah we were like the screenplay was probably better than the way, yeah like, like how it was probably out. like oh this could work yeah but i wish yeah. they would release it so i could read it because there's there's like certain things about it that i feel like got left out of the, the movie but you can go and listen to our conversation on that one because we have <laughs> yeah, like a whole link it or podcast episode yeah i'll put the link in the in the description <laughs> But yeah. yeah, like, I don't know. This Oscars I, was weird. Because you funny. had things oh, yeah. like... Oh, sorry. You, no, had you, thi- <laughs> you had things like... You had, um... Like, Maori, hairdresser, and makeup. That winning is, like, super, super amazing as well. Because it's the first time, like, Black hairstylists and makeup artists have actually, like, won an award. <laughs> And so that's amazing. Uh, um, if it's just, just like it, it feels like some of the great things about it are like overshadowed because of the fact that like Mank is still winning things, and like <laughs> I know it's taken up space. <laughs> yeah, it's like we already know. Like, no offense to Frances Dorman, and like I love how she did in this movie. And like, yeah, she did great, but like. <laughs> If you're comparing <laughs> this specific performance to the other actors and their actors and actresses and their specific performances, it's just like, okay, like, yeah, you did great, but so did they. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you did great, but also, Try. like, I'm sorry, Vanessa Kirby kind of, kind of. You're just saying that because that's your wife, no? <laughs> okay, but even like Carrie Morgan, I feel like served yeah she served us you know and it's just like my pick would have been viola davis for that one yeah it's like viola should have won i yeah i think none of those other girls had it on viola i'm sorry but she kind of like killed it like why does she to me yeah i'm like that should have been a landslide same with like chadwick it's like really that should have been a landslide too i'm like we need a recount because <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> and not even just because like this is his last chance to win like an Oscar, yeah. but that character and the way he played it, I have yeah. never seen someone play something that well before. Yeah. Never in my life. Mm-hmm. Like that was an amazing performance. He did so good. Mm-hmm. And that's ridiculous. I mm-hmm. completely agree with Glenn Close and Andre Day with um the Academy does no shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Wow. That was probably my best, my favorite segment, to be honest. My mom made a comment last year. We watched it together last year, and Brad Pitt won for Best Actor for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. And my mom was like, I don't think that he acted I didn't like even it. like the movie. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. My mom was like, <laughs> I doubt that they actually, like, voted for him for that movie. She was like, I think they just want to give him an Oscar. Because he's, like, yeah, been nominated so many to. times. Yeah, and they, like, feel bad. Like, when Leo... Same with, like, Leo. Revenue, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like, he should have gotten it wasn't... for a separate movie, like not that exactly. Movie. <laughs> exactly. Same with I'm sorry, my king Al Pacino. I'm sorry, he got it for <laughs> Scent of a Woman, which is like, what the fuck? He should have gotten it for The Godfather. I'm sorry, but like, I'm still mad about that. It's been like 60 years. I know. Anyhow, like, hello. They like 
it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, okay, do like, that for those guys. Do that for Chadwick. Like, it's the same I know. Shit. Anyways, they did it with, and this might be controversial, but I feel like that's what Ooh. they also did with Moonlight. Oh, because right think? before that was that time that everything that that hashtag went viral. Hashtag yeah. Oscar So White went viral the year before, and people were boycotting the Oscars and the very mm-hmm. next Oscars. They're like, oh, actually, the Moonlight one. And you're like, yeah. okay. Their <laughs> PR agents were standard. like, oh, shit, people are talking shit. Quick, change it. And they printed yeah, something out real quick. Oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> yeah. Bad. Yeah. It's like a pity thing. You yeah. Do it it all the like time. That. And it's like, like, it's like pity wins. Yeah. It's like, the they're like, they're like, here you go. Don't come back. Like, yeah, okay. it's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oscars is so scam yeah and i was saying i brought this up last time that who i can't even remember and they said that fucking um disney picks a new like ethnicity to focus on each year and where i was like oh maybe the oscars does that too literally they did do that because i was like oh minari <laughs> has a good chance and i was like wow like two korean movies back to back years no minari it's God. not even a korean it was as movie if it didn't it's, exist. A, it's an american movie yeah and they literally yeah. were like, oh, we're going to nominate it for, like, Best Foreign Language Film. And we're like, it's literally an American movie. Everyone yeah. in the movie is an American. <laughs> like, yeah. are you kidding me? And I remember there's so much, like, discourse about it. And, like, everyone was like, you're really trying to snub this movie? Just by category, like, how you categorize mm-hmm. it. To say that it's, like, other and not, like, something that is actually... An American experience just because it's not a white American experience. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. That pissed yeah. me off so much. And it's upsetting to know that like they do have the capability to take it seriously because Parasite won four Oscars. So if yeah. you get nominated for Best International Film, you can still get nominated for other things. But they were like, nah. Like, no. We you don't win anything. <laughs> fuck you. We're not I doing Koreans this year. Do. Literally. And I was like, fuck. I really thought that Minari Sorry, was we're like, doing women this year. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> they can only focus on one fucking thing. Like, literally, yeah. Yeah. They literally, yeah. Sorry, Chowder from Viola. You guys got Moonlight this year. We're just focusing on women. <laughs> Stop. Literally, that's exactly how it is. It fucking oh, kills goodness. me. Okay, I'm going to cut. <laughs> I'm probably going to move this somewhere else because I still have one more fact. That one. <laughs> oh, go for it. Um, the last fact I wanted to share was um, in the movie, uh, the character's name is Fern, the main character girl. She's like, there's a part where she's like looking at photos and like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And those were actual photos of Frances McDormand's like dad and family and like oh. of her Whoa. that they like put in the movie. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I know, right? Isn't Again, it makes it feel very indie film set. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure we did that in a film that we had to make once. So we were like, let's just take pictures of the person and then we'll, like, have them write down things and we'll just use it so that it doesn't look like we did it. <laughs> I think we did do that. We, we, do that we did work. that. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. I always try to have, like, the actor or whoever's acting, like, have some type, like, if they have to write or if there's like a calendar or something or like anything where we're going to see like a visual of either like their handwriting or something, it's not going to be mine. It's going to be theirs. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like too weird or like how they text, like it's going to be their texting style because yeah. otherwise it would just be me inserting it in there. And it's like not realistic. It kind of takes you out of it a little bit, but yeah. Totally. So yeah. You can tone it's like that. Tone is off. Yeah. Or like in a, they did that with that movie. Tell the boys above before. There's like one picture mm-hmm. that they have on like their phones, like a screensaver or something that in the movie is like super important to like the plot. And it ended up being something that they used because it was something that the actors like on a break took of each other. Um, I think I remember seeing yeah, that. Yeah, they yeah. took of each other and like they're like, this is way better than any of our like stage stuff. Let's use this instead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's going to feel better because it's authentic. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. I forgot about that movie. Um, so all of these facts I got from um there's a 22 minute like 
sort of documentary, an actual documentary special on yep. Nomadland called See You Down the Road. Um, it aired on ABC, but it's actually on YouTube, and you can watch uh-huh. it on the Searchlight Pictures. I wonder account. if it'll be on Hulu or something. Yeah, maybe. I wonder. Because that's how I watched the movie. Yeah. Under extra. So, yeah, you can go watch that and, yeah, and see kind of like cool. behind the scenes and stuff. And there's other stuff that they mentioned in there, which is cool to see. We'll try and link so. it in the description to you. Before we move on to the next segment, I do want to point out like how well this movie did with like following its theme throughout the throughout the whole thing. Because I know yeah. that I talk about this all the time when there's a good movie that does it. I always say this movie did so well following the theme all the way through. Because I <laughs> like if it doesn't do that, it pisses me off to no end. I like, skip very and I'm just like yeah, I hate this movie. But this one did so well because. I mean, even from the very beginning, and I this is something I specifically love, is when a film will take um, something cinematography-wise, either like a, a frame or something symbolic even, like within the frame, that is like, that's the movie. <laughs> like that's the whole thing just compiled into one single screenshot. And I actually did take a screenshot of the scene because in the kind of beginning of the movie when she's meeting those people at like, I think it was like packaging center. It was either like Amazon or FedEx or something. Was it Amazon? Yeah. Amazon. And Amazon. And they're on their lunch break and they're, they're eating lunch and she's kind of talking to the people around here and stuff. There's one person and they have like a bunch of tattoos and they're talking about like the idea of like home and she's, sorry, I just bumped the mic. <laughs> but they have um like a tattoo on their like, elbow almost it's like right <laughs> right in there <laughs> and i'll probably send it to sassy so she can put the screenshot here but i was like as soon as it's out i was like that's it that's the movie that that right there and basically it's just this song lyric quote that she has tattooed on her arm and it's like it says like home is it a place or is it something you carry with and I was like, that's it. That's the movie. And it it really does carry its way all the way through, especially with the whole idea of like van life and being a nomad. It's it's so like prevalent to, to just like the idea of like your inner peace that they had in this film about like your inner peace and the idea of home. And like, I feel like that was kind of also the struggle with the main character as well was because she was doing all of this stuff. And while she was doing it, she did keep, like, in the beginning, she kept bumping into people that she knew beforehand. And there was, like, a little bit of, like, a a resistance to the fact that, like, oh, yes, I, I live in a band. I'm doing this kind of stuff. Like, don't worry about me. You don't have to worry about me. It's it's fine. I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. It's something she kept repeating in all of her conversations. But once she gets to the end of the film and she becomes more comfortable with, like, herself and what her new idea of home is it her conversations change and you can see that it goes right back to this idea of like is it some place or is it something you carry within you and obviously for fern it's something she carries within her because of her father and the things that she has from her father and herself and her journey throughout the whole film so when you get to the end her conversation will change from oh like don't worry about me. I'm doing fine. I'm doing okay to, oh, I've met all these beautiful people along the way. And like, I want to do that. I want to do this. I'm going to go to this place or I don't know what I'm going to do next, but it's going to be great kind of thing. And I just thought it was so great. Like, <laughs> so, so good. Um, so yeah, that's just my very random screenshot uh, analysis. <laughs> this is a new segment. We're going to make a new segment. Out of it. I probably should. <laughs> So <laughs> analysis, That's take a great. frame and analyze it and how it, no, and how dude, it I, is relevant. That's fantastic. To Everything is so fantastic. And that was even like, you're right. That's something that totally came up like the whole time. And in that same scene that you said where she was like, oh, I'm doing fine. Like, don't worry about me. Da, da, da. That was when that the young girl asked her like, oh, my mom says you're homeless. And she was mm-hmm. like, no, I'm not homeless. I'm just houseless. Yeah. Um, she's not so quite like, comfortable with it yet. She's still trying yeah, to like defend like, this idea of being a nomad. <laughs> and that's something that I think exists a lot weirdly in like kids media, like cartoons and that kind of stuff, is like the idea of home and like 
like what is home and where can home you know where can you like cultivate a home life and mm-hmm. you know where can you feel comfortable and, and grow and stuff like that but you don't really see it with like especially older adults you never really see like yeah. older adults first of all in, in movies and then like second in movies like this where it's just all people like over 50 like yeah I don't know and it's interesting it because I feel like the only times you really get narratives like that are with like queer people and with people of color <laughs> Like, when their stories are centered, you tend to get this idea of, like, a conflict between your home and your, like, inner peace or, like, yeah. uh, like your found family type thing. And yeah. so generally when it's, like, a white character, it generally does happen later in life when, like, the people they've always had around them or, like, the government has always been supporting them. They're like, oh, my gosh, they're not there anymore. And it's shocking to them. <laughs> But for us, we're kind of like, yeah, well, <laughs> we've always oh, yeah. been left out. We haven't been taken care of. We don't have that crisis because we had it at age 12, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I see what you're saying. I think it's interesting. like just interesting like, to um, acknowledge that like the search for like home and stuff like that, it never really mm-hmm. is like over. Like you think like, oh, yeah. you'll reach a certain life, you'll get married, you'll do this, that, have a house, and you're, you're done and you're good for life. But it's not really like that. I think yeah. that it was kind of cool, like to, to explore like the after, where it's like, okay, I did mm-hmm. all this stuff, but life still happens, and like what yeah. happens after, and like life still, still happening, that kind of stuff. <laughs> what do I do? What happened? Life is still happening. What do I do now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Which I feel that every cool. single year of my life. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> <You're> still <laughs> <What> here. <now? laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought I did it. Uh, I crazy. <laughs> I know, right? Is it still happening? Dang. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, got kind of dark. Definitely. Sorry about that. <laughs> you what? So that got kind of dark. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like that's kind of what the movie's about. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a bunch of people about. that like didn't plan on doing what they were doing. Like they were just like, oh, I guess I'm here now, and they're trying to make yeah. the best of it. And I think so. I told my dad when he said he wanted to watch the film, or like he was like, "What's it about?" And I was like, "Well, it's very much an Academy movie." Because old white people yeah. are definitely going to relate with this narrative. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're down to me on this podcast. <laughs> we should. We should have a nice podcast. Yeah. You would fun. have some opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, you would probably find the movie interesting. And it totally is like an academy movie. Because you know how we, I feel like we talked about a little bit more Rainey about how movies that are nominated in the academy, like that the academy nominates and that they like vote for and tend to like choose, kind of have their own specific things that are all very like, oh, did it pass this? Is it, is it a, a nice, struggle movie? Like, yeah, is it a struggle yeah. movie? Um, does it have like a white person going through a crisis at a late age? Check. <laughs> <laughs> That's no mad thing for you it talks about the government well and how it kind of disenfranchises people while still not condemning the government for doing it Mm -hmm. i'm i'm just saying i'm just saying (laughs) no that was that was a criticism i saw because i know you follow robert daniels on twitter now but he like boosted a post that said like um like nomadland like gives off or they they are operating under the facade of being like the poor america or being like you know the other america when that's not even as bad as it gets or you're something like that and they were like oh they're passing it off as like this you're is have true struggle again. but like that's not even <laughs> that that i don't know but i don't know if i believe that i don't even know if i'll include this i kind of just wanted to like talk to you about this yeah yeah i don't no, know there's, there's so that was like a discussion to it but, there's a lot of privilege to it but yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's always going to be, like, like once again, the Academy loves, you know, when there's a struggle that they don't feel bad for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the movie <laughs> definitely ends and you're like, oh, they're okay. But it's like, who's going to help them? Like, they're still yeah. out there. Like, <laughs> still... are they getting money? <laughs> <They're> st- <laughs> are they good? Okay. Yeah, just because they decided to be happy with it doesn't mean that you had to keep them there. <laughs> 
<laughs> like if you have the Period. choice to do that, that's cool. But a lot of people yeah. don't have the choice. Um, so don't let this yeah. one convince you that it's their choice to be like that. That's something yeah. that happens a lot. People are like, oh, well, some people really just like that lifestyle. And it's like when you try to boil it down to the idea of a lifestyle, that's where you've messed up because now you're just assuming that everyone like that is making a lifestyle choice when half the time it's it's a privilege to be able to even make that choice. There was something they mentioned in the movie when she goes and visits like her old friends and stuff. And they're like, oh, wow, like uh, Fern thinks she's so cool. Like, like we get it. You're traveling. and You're so cool. Whatever. She's like, you guys think I want this? And she's kind of like upset and sad or whatever. Yeah. And like, OK, whatever. Like the fact that you sold your house. Whatever, she's like, I didn't sell. Like I, like, lost, I lost my, my house. Like, none of this was because I wanted it. And yeah. that whole thing. But then that's all that's as deep as it goes. It doesn't really go for that. Yeah, it's a very like subtle movie where it's kind of like there's this thing that we've been talking about in our film class, uh, where we've been talking about how like you can still adhere to the ideas of like popular culture, but within it you can kind of put in coded messages to like the people that aren't those people that it's like being praised by. So, like, for example, she put that in. That wasn't for the Academy. That was for the audience. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was for her and the people that don't have the choice. (laughs) That was for those people that assume that it's a choice. Like, that was, like, people that are, like, her friends that said that, they're not going to think twice about that scene. But people like us, where we know that there's sometimes not a choice like we're gonna think about that that's gonna resonate with us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's, that's for us like... it's not for the academy <laughs> yeah that's true yeah because yeah I, I feel like yeah. we're in a time where it's like in order to it's like the film industry is at this place where it's like either you're with the film industry or you're like not with the film industry but at the same time if you're making movies and films at some point if you want it to be something that you can like live off of, you have to somehow be able to make money off of it. And in order to do that, you have to adhere to the system a little bit because that's just the society that we live in. I think we talked about it a little bit in a, in you've got mail episode actually, where it's the discourse of living in like a capitalist society, having to navigate that while still maintaining part of your soul. <laughs> and so yeah. that's kind of like, those narratives where it's like okay I have to give them something but I'm also going to give myself a little bit and it's hard to maintain that balance a lot of the time and I feel like a lot of the audience yeah. members that's like ah oh, you can't be capitalist and this and it's like we have no choice <laughs> yeah like if you were in the same position you would do the same thing because yeah. like again it's a privilege to just be able to like do something as a hobby nowadays mm-hmm. like it's not really something that you just get to do because everything has to be monetized it's kind of crazy yeah to like do something as a hobby that doesn't impede other facets of your life yeah like i think the screenwriter was once talking like oh if you're a writer and you're a screenwriter you need to have a hobby that just can be like picked apart or monetized or like sold Mm -hmm. that's like you need to have something that's completely yours because otherwise like you're gonna be devastated yeah it's true yeah yeah that's very true well i guess that's a that's it's kind of back to that whole, well, it's kind of, yeah, that universal, like, everything in moderation and, like, yeah. lots of out, outlets and just having lots of, you know. Yeah. Like, an even life. Like, in the pie of life, just, like, splitting it off a lot, yeah. Yeah, because, again, here we go, my capitalism rant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but just, like, we live in capitalism, and in order to, like, survive, we have to monetize something. I know there's like so many different discourses on it and stuff like that where it's like oh you go to college and that's like totally supporting like capitalist societies but at the same time it's teaching you how to like rebel against it and it's just so interesting because like we have no choice there is not a a place in the world that doesn't survive on capitalism like there, there isn't a choice that's what we have to accept unfortunately like if we didn't live in capitalism that would be wonderful I would love that so much. <laughs> like like uh like those ideas of like where you can actually make art and have the time to make art and actually make like a project because like it costs money to make a project, it costs money to be creative, it costs time and effort to be creative, but then at the same time like you're not given the time to be fully creative to like your potential. 
And if you are, you've already made money enough to sustain yourself so that you can give yourself the time. Crazy. Yeah. So I don't have any recommendations for this one. Did you have any? I can't think of a single movie that's like this one. I do. I just got to look up. I forget what it's okay. called because I thought about it like in the middle of this movie. Leave No Trace. There we go. Oh, okay. He's like homeless, but he wants to stay homeless. And he lives with like a squatter in this like park. And then it becomes like a gray area because his daughter's living with him and she's like 13 and they're like okay you can't just like squat with your daughter everywhere like you're not like that's i guess in their eyes child abuse so Uh like she gets taken to like a system he's like she can't be in a system and they're like okay well you have to like you know find a place to live give her like a stable environment etc yeah it's one of those so i guess that one and then Palm Springs because everyone should watch it <laughs> since I mentioned it earlier for literally no reason it's not related <laughs> I mentioned it earlier you just kind need of to watch it. it kind of yeah. relates <laughs> kind of, well, yeah. like if you're like yeah I want to watch another movie like no there's similar land, things there's Springs. similar things yeah completely different though. Palm Springs is a comedy so yeah it's, it's yeah completely different, different vibes same thing still different a vibe. hopeful hopeful motif mm-hmm Hopefulness in the face of eternal struggle, but it is a comedy. And then I I also kind of want to want to say that it's a little bit similar to thematically to that movie we watched (laughs) that we did a podcast episode on that we haven't released yet with uh, Tessa Thompson. Little Woods. Yes. You think? I guess so. Yeah. Like a little bit? Actually, yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> Just like a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's got similar yeah. vibes. It does. It's kind of like that that interesting, like, yeah. I think, yeah, I think so. It's more like uh, fictional. You can tell it's a fictional story. Yeah. But I see what you mean. Like, it's definitely like, yeah. Okay down okay i don't want to spoil things because then we're going to talk about that movie later you're right i could see it okay yeah just a little bit i would i would say those ones okay bomb those are good ones yeah so i guess you rate the movie oh oh yeah rating. i was like we should definitely skip over that because <gasps> oh this I is not one of those <laughs> movies yeah um, let's not do that. i don't want to go there <laughs> No, we're not doing Sorry, that. Sorry, we did mix trivia and sound about the math. Um, it's going to take the place yeah. of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were... How many men in this movie? Like, that one dude. And they're all crusty. The only ones I can think of are, like, the ones with the dogs on the lap. Remember? That was, like, that scene stuck in my head so much. She, like, walks past three guys. <laughs> and they're all sitting with their shirt with their off. Dogs. And they all have a dog in their lap. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> F M F. Okay, cool. Down the line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that counts. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna knock shit over. That's so oh funny. I don't even that remember what they look like. <laughs> I know it's fine. <laughs> we don't have to. Okay, we did it. <laughs> we did it. I did it for you. It's fine. <laughs> All right, rating. Okay. Um, <laughs> dang, rating. What would I rate it? I'm so impressed with this film. It's very interesting. I don't think I would give it like a 10. I feel like I'd give it an eight. Yeah, I would give it like an eight and a half. I think. Yeah, like eight and, eight and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was really good and I really liked it. And I would watch it again and I would recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> but then. There's also caveats to like my recommendation. Like I feel like if you're going to watch it, like there's certain things you need to know going into it. Because I feel like not everyone's prepared to watch it. Or, like, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, it's definitely, yeah. It's not a Transformers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Okay. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Nice. I'm, I'm really glad we actually got to do this episode. Because yeah. there's, I don't know, I was just, like, I'm so glad that, like, you know, something something happened for us ladies. Us ladies of color, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Snaps. <laughs> Been eating that one for a bit. <laughs> so yeah, yeah thank you so cool. much. 
so much for staying along today. If you stayed this whole time, thank you for tuning in and listening or watching whatever you're consuming with content on. Um, go ahead and give us a like, thumbs up if you like this episode. Comment down below other movies that you want us to review. Again, for the purpose of the podcast, I haven't said this in a while. For the purpose of the podcast, it's got to be written by, directed by, or starring a woman. So go ahead and drop those down below. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, Come and find us on like Instagram with me and DLS. I don't know how the podcasting <laughs> sites work because I you can't comment like DM. Yeah. It's weird, I guess. <laughs> anyway, come find us on YouTube. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. Like you can find us. We have an email. It's in the it's in the description. So yeah, you can you can get a hold of us if you really want to. Please do. We would love to hear from you. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day or whatever time it is. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye.